Hello, my name is Hannah and I'm introducing Dr. Julia Barron, who's a consultant cardiologist. Today we're going to be talking about ECGs and this is the first in a series of podcasts for School of Surgery. Hello, um, I'm Julia Barron. I work at uh, the Royal Derby Hospital as a cardiologist and uh, I'm going to talk through some ECG interpretation. We're going to start with some fairly straightforward stuff and eventually hopefully move on to some more complicated ECGs towards the end. This is what we would all think of as a typical and normal ECG complex. The P waves at the start, they are caused by atrial depolarization. We then have a delay, uh, the PR interval, which is the delay in the AV node. And following this, we have the QRS complex, which is caused by ventricular depolarization. We always refer to it as a QRS complex, even though sometimes the shape of it is not a Q, an R, and an S. Uh, it might just be an RS. A Q wave is where the first deflection goes straight down. Uh, an R wave is any upward deflection after this. And an S wave is a downward deflection after an R wave. The ST segment comes next, which uh, cardiologists are always very interested in. And finally, we have the T wave, which is ventricular repolarization. 12 lead ECG is made up of a series of leads that are attached to the patient. Um, the anterior leads are quite easy to remember, V1 to V4. They're stuck on the front of the chest. Um, the lateral leads, two of these are V5 and V6. Again, they're on the side of the chest, so reasonably easy to remember. You'll also see, if you look at this, that um, the R wave starts quite small in lead V1 and gets gradually larger as you go round across the leads to V6. We refer to this as R wave progression. The limb leads, these are the leads that we stick onto the arms and legs. And various combinations of these leads lead to vectors through the coronal plane of the heart. Leads 2, 3 and AVF are considered to be the inferior leads looking at the inferior wall of the heart. And 1 and AVL are also lateral leads looking at the high lateral portion of the heart. You can also see that we use the limb leads to work out the cardiac axis, which we'll come on to later. So we end up with a 12 lead ECG, such as you see here. Uh, if you look along the bottom, we have a 10 second continuous recording of the heartbeat, and this is the rhythm strip. Usually, this is often lead two. If you look at lead two, you can see it's a fairly sort of typical PQRST complex, and the P waves tend to be quite easy to see in lead two, hence it being used for the rhythm strip. In fact, in this ECG, it's V1. You can also see that I've circled the um, calibration box on the left-hand side in red. It's always worth having a quick look at this. This is what it should look like. It should be two squares tall and one square wide. If it's a different shape from this, the calibration is different from that you would expect for interpretation of an ECG. Sometimes this has been done intentionally to shrink the size of the complexes or to speed up the paper in order to see the rhythm more clearly. But do always have a glance at it in case somebody has either intentionally or accidentally altered it. This is a normal ECG and as we go through our ECG interpretation we're going to use these little diagrams which are uh, indicators of the cardiac rhythm. You can see here that we have the SA node at the top of the picture um, and as this fires it causes atrial activation in the P wave, then goes to the AV node in the centre and the delay there gives us our PR interval. Then we go down the Hispokinji system. This is a specialised rapid conducting tissue that disseminates the electricity as quickly as possible through the ventricles. Because it's happening quickly it is narrow on the ECG. Anything that happens fast on an ECG is narrow. So if you have a narrow QRS on your ECG, this is because the, the ventricular depolarization is happening down a functioning uh, Hispokinji system. And this brings about a nice coordinated contraction of the ventricles. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes on podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.